the Rick Hansen, day 146. Right, it's been a long time since I did a last video. The last one I did was the 25th of July. Um, since then, I came out of hospital yesterday after eight days. I've had my bladder removed, prostate removed, lymph nodes, I think a couple of other bits, I'm not quite sure. Um, I had my operation a week last Wednesday. I had what they call an IVC fitted, which is a upside down umbrella frame, basically like that, which goes through your groin up into it's the artery going up towards your heart, your main artery. That was to stop any blood clots before my surgery. That was fine, that was successful. My surgery was seven hours, I think, maybe a little bit more, whatever, I don't know. That was that was successful as well. So on the surgery side of things, yeah, very good from they said it was very, you know. I had eight days in hospital altogether from going into coming home. Um had two days in ICU after my operation, so I'd I'd lost Wednesday and Thursday last week I've lost. I don't I, then days are gone. I've got no recollection of any of it. The amount of drugs I was on after the operation. I mean it's seriously major major surgery. It's gone right through you know my abdominal wall. It was only five incisions because it was done by machine um but by robot remote control robot but at the end of the day it was a massively invasive surgery i had c1 inhibitor before it which is for my hereditary angioedema um which is rare enough in itself that thing on top of then the bloody rare cancer which just seemed to be full of everything that seems to be rare um, bag adjustments strange to be quite honest it's a very strange thing it's psychologically I feel okay-ish at the minute but again who knows I mean this could just be a look calm for the storm or this could be how it goes I don't know as you can tell our voice is still croaky it seems a bit better today than it did recently but again that could change um, still chemo the biggest issues I had in hospital chemo wise were since having chemo my veins are just atrocious absolutely bloody atrocious you could put a needle in my vein with your eyes shut in the dark and you'd find a vein and it'd do it straight, you know, straight away now they're spending ages trying to get needles in trying to get blood out I mean I come out of surgery on the Wednesday, I was Wednesday, Thursday in ICU. I went back on the ward Friday, covered just drips and pipes here, drips and pipes here, oxygen thing up my nose. Um, you know, just a just a mess to be fair. Um, I had a meeting with a stoma nurse on Monday and Tuesday to show me how to how I change it. I keep it clean how I look after it obviously my stone was going to shrink in size over time so I've got to measure it every time to make sure that it's the right size it's not too big it's not too small it won't leak which this is at the moment where the trouble is going to be because I'm new to it and I don't understand all of it but I've got the district nurse hopefully coming in the next day or two to you know keep an eye on me give me you know give me advice and help on how to do stuff um, Everybody that's thanked, wished, you know, asked about me, well wished and everything, thank you so much, you know, it means a lot, it means a hell of a lot. I didn't tell anybody I was going into hospital really, because at the end of the day, and this isn't the people I know and I, you know, my friends, family, whatever, I don't want people knowing I'm not in my house, you know, it's not anything but that, I just don't, I didn't want anybody knowing I was in my house, and to be honest, I had enough going on in my head without worrying about other people worrying, if you know what I mean. It was it was hard enough for just me and Chris and my immediate family knowing what was going on. I didn't really want to have everybody else's worries on top of everything that was going on. 
it was I say it was traumatic but I was out so I don't remember it but the pain I was in yeah it definitely was traumatic the pain in my stomach is <sighs> coughing my god one cough or a sneeze I mean I sneezed yesterday I actually thought my, my insides fell out it was so painful I'm obviously now at higher risk of hernias because of all the cuttings through my abdominal wall um, I'm not embarrassed about the bag at this moment in time um, at the end of the day that's my life now that's now part of me you know it's not nothing's going to change with that now I'm always going to have it it's never going to go away you know oh glasses why am I wearing glasses since chemo my eyes have got worse so I have to wear my glasses for a lot more stuff I mean I don't really need them for a video I just had them on before because I was doing something so yeah, take them off but um, it's been it's been a difficult few weeks it's been a lot going on a lot going on through my head as well hell of a lot of stuff going on through my head um, the nurses and everything in Stoke just out of this world they're so good they're so good at reassuring you and you're not the only one and I won't be the last one either you know the amount of people that went in and out that ward over the week I was there loads a lot more were just prostate there's only me and another guy who had as much removed as we did but at the end of the day I would imagine prostate's just as traumatic as the rest of it um, obviously now I've got to take it easy I've got to take it easy for for a while it's anyway between 12 and 16 week recovery which takes me pretty much up to Christmas um, still off the fags which was the one thing Chris said when she came up to see me she didn't come up till the Friday because of Thursday, Wednesday Thursday what's the point I was so out of it I wouldn't have known and to be honest I wasn't fully aware on Friday properly but one thing Chris said to me he said is there anything you need anything you want it's like the only thing I want at the moment is a fag, but I didn't have I didn't have one. Didn't have a fag at all, but that's what I wanted. And so far, I've still stuck to what I have, and I don't know what now. Eight weeks is it? Something I don't know. I don't know what it is without a fag now, but you know. I mean, I don't know. It's, it's kind of, oh, there comes a fun bit. It's trying to move without hurting. I mean, that is. Uh, that's my bag. Those tubes there are stents. So basically now the urine comes through there and just drips. Just little drips. Oh, oh the bag. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I mean, it's just again, it's ignorance, isn't it? I thought the bag you could... Hours and hours and hours and hours and hours, you know, before it fills up. No, does it help? A bit of fluid you drink a couple of cups of tea it soon fills up and it gets heavy and what it does is because it's on a it's a ring that clips onto a base plate which is attached to your stock what happens is when it gets heavy it's expandable a tad and it pulls and bends down so it pulls on your stomach so you're always sort of slightly checking it um i got a night one i got a connect at night times which again it's just for you know just to make life easier, to be honest. Um, side effects, I don't really know much yet. It's just normal stuff. I think with operations, it's like your body, due to the amount of morphine and stuff like that. I mean, constipation again is another one, but that seems to be my lot in life bloody constipation with this thing. Um, obviously, pain got rucks of painkillers now for me for when I need them if and when um, but it's going to be a big adjustment not just for me I mean to go into the to go into the bathroom or whatever I go to, to change it over um, there's a lot of stuff you got to take with you it's not just like a bag and off you go there's, there's a bag it's dry wipes there's there's so many different things you've got to measure measure the stoma because over time it shrinks until it gets to a specific it'll just heal itself at a certain size 
Um, so you've got to make sure you clean that. Clean the stents, but clean the stents and hope to God you don't pull them out. Because I don't want that. I mean, it was bad enough they were flushing the stents. It was only a small syringe of water in each one. But the pain on that was unbelievable. Which, when you re think about it, when they explain it, they're basically pushing water into your kidney. And your kidney doesn't expand. It's one size. So it's forcing stuff in that shouldn't be in there. Um, so I haven't had to have that one, just hoping when the, the district news comes around, I haven't got to have the, the flashes, because I hear it's so bad. So, so bad. Which now, if that was what I'd have had to go through, if I'd have had the rebuild, I'm so glad I went against the rebuild, because I couldn't do that. I couldn't do that every week or whatever it is, or every day or whatever. I just couldn't deal with the pain. I've got enough pain now, I don't need more. Um... Everything that they've removed now is now in a lab. They've now got to cut it, check it, make sure that all the cancer has been removed. I would, I don't know what they do. I don't know they do a CT scan after just to double check. I know they did say that when they do the op, if there is any cancer, they can usually find it, usually see it. So I'm hoping if there was, it took it out. But nobody said anything, so I'm hoping there was nothing else there. So I've so so I'm not cancer free yet by any means because I don't know I don't know if I am I don't know if I aren't. I've got to go back up to Stoke again in a few weeks a month six weeks ish to get this IVC out. That's only day siege thing so I'm probably in and out in about half an hour for that. It's a long way to go but I need it removed. I don't want to keep it in because I said there's a lot of risk then of blood clots getting caught in it and then stopping the flow that way. So you know it's swings around about really. The um, the amount of work they must have done. I mean, I know there's videos online, and in a few more months, I'll probably will have a watch of one to see what they did. At this moment in time, I don't really want to see what they did because I can feel what they did. I mean, hopefully, in the next few weeks, month, I'll be up and about, and you know, I'm gonna. A little bit of a walk. I mean, I gotta walk because I can't sit still because I get bloody clots and stuff doing it that way. But you know, have a little stroll here, a little stroll there, and whatever, take my time. But again, that's I'll take that as it comes. I'm not gonna rush anything. I'm not gonna you know push myself too hard. I just stick to what I, you know, to to, to where I know my limits are. Um, so again. The purpose of this video and these videos has always been please get yourself checked out don't ignore anything don't think that everything's fine because it may well not be you know and i still want that message to get across hopefully for me now that this has all been sorted but what a horrible way to get things sorted you know being told you got cancer is bad going through the chemo is bad and having to get yourself prepared for a surgery that you don't know what they're going to do and what they're going to find and then readjusting your whole life after this surgery because of ignoring a problem thinking it's not a big you know oh whatever it's fine it'll clear up so you know if you think there's something wrong please get yourself checked out you know for, for your well-being please go and do it um, again for everybody you know thank you for watching them please like share and subscribe I want it shared because I want as many people to see as possible I want as many people to go yeah yeah I'm gonna get something checked out because of him because of what he's gone through and I haven't got to go through that and that's really all I want is people to just not have to go through what we've been through and there's still a lot to go through it's not finished yet by a long shot but again it's another step it's another step and it's also a, you know I'm alive I'm not dead I'm pissing in a bag but I'm not dead you know and that at the end of today is the main thing I'll be 52 I'm too young to die I don't want to die yet not for a long time so you know I'm still alive and hopefully now with all this I've got myself a nice you know a nice amount of time left as well got a future I don't have to worry about you know dying early because of cancer because they might have hopefully got rid of it all 
So, you know, thank you for everybody for everything you've done so far. And you continue to do as well, you know. It um, means a lot. It really does. So I'll speak to everybody soon. And thank you once again.